Welcome back, folks. Today we're hanging out with three automotive legends. These guys are actually land speed racers, like Pete Ardema, Kent Riches, and Randy Nelson. And we have his machinist fabricator, Brian O'Lear. Today you're gonna see behind the scenes and learn about Kent's 400 mile per hour streamliner that he's building. Kent is way beyond a big block. He's gonna use two Hibusa performance motorcycle engines in this streamliner with hopes of going over 400 miles per hour. Today you're gonna see some behind the scenes in the shop and you're gonna see some pretty cool stuff and learn what it takes firsthand to build a 400 mile per hour streamliner. Listen in, this is cool stuff. All right, we're here today with Kent Riches, and yep. Kent, this is, uh, I understand your, your toy or your hobby shop or your, your workshop, what do we call that? <laughs> here, yeah, this is my um, my toy shop. Your toy shop. That's where we got all the fun and games happens. My other shop over in Vista is where they make parts and make money, and over here is where I spend it. Okay. And uh, <laughs> I see we have a couple other folks in the room too. We've got Pete Ardema. Good morning. Pete, and then um, Brian O'Lear, right? Yes. Right. And uh, Brian, you're a fabricator? Yeah, fabricator for the last 20 some odd years. Just making stuff out of metal. Making stuff out of metal. So I see we got- A little metal together. We got a lot of metal here. Can you tell us about what we're looking at? Well, this is a streamliner project. Um, streamliner class being the epitome of land speed racing that they're generally small, compact, aerodynamic as possible, as much horsepower as possible. There's probably a less restrictions in a streamliner class than any of the other classes. So it's kind of the open class of what we're doing. Okay, and what, I know I'm very familiar with Pete's um, Lakester and, and the different motors that he makes and, uh, and Kevin, and they have you know, different configurations. What type of powertrain configuration is this gonna have? We're using motorcycle motors. And this project's a continuation of what we raced for like 13 years, so we learned a lot off of that. But this one, it will have Suzuki Hayabusa motors in them. Two of them. Two of them. Yeah. Yeah, so they'll both be blown. Uh, so they're turbocharged, turbocharged, fuel injected, uh, intercooled uh, with nitrous. Cause because why not? <laughs> and are, are those the motors outside? Can, yeah. Can we yeah, see them? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're starting to come together. Yeah, those are two Suzuki Hayabusa motors. Two Suzuki Hayabusa motors? Yeah. Uh, what's the yep. displacement of these? They're 1350 still, which gives me 2700 cc in a 3000 cc class. So we're slightly under a little bit, which is okay because I like to have a little bit more meat between the bores and the cylinder, especially with turbo and high high boost levels. I want to make sure I have good head gasket seal on them. So. Okay, so what um, what are your projections? I mean, what are these? What's the output of something like this when it's tur turbocharged? And I think we're going to stock off. Or right now, in this configuration, we're probably going to start off with about 550 horsepower each motor. And I think we can easily get up to 750 and have them pretty reliable. On methanol with the spray of nitrous, we can probably peak 900 a motor, but they'll wow. be pretty fragile at that. 900. Yeah, so, so that's going to be on a backup pass that we'll spray them with some nitrous. But 550 will be able to run seasons. 750, they start getting right on the edge, start beating up the crankcases on them. And anything higher than that, they're, they're kind of grenades, but... Again, if I make a qualifying pass, and then on a backup pass, we just turn the screw a little bit, spray a little bit of nitrous, and hope we make it to the five under power. Okay, what are your what would what are you projecting like the speeds you would be approaching on approaching on something like this well, in a streamliner? Well, with that's always kind of a uh, kind of a jinx yourself call yeah. when you do that. Um, I mean, is there a number or is it, are you... Theoretical vehicles set theoretical records every theoretical time. Uh huh. But on paper and looking at it, 430 is a number I, I, I come up with. Okay, so this is a 400 mile per hour vehicle. Yeah, now, it's okay. going to take us a couple of years. I mean, I think 2022, we're going to shake it down and get it down the course and start getting things dialed in. And then uh, 2023, we're going to freaking go for it. Now, 
you were saying earlier that the motors are going to be configured one in front of the or they're kind of can you explain how they're going to be configured as they're laid out in the vehicle yeah so there's going to be front motor and then a rear motor and then they're coupled with a motor plate on the side and that's that plate inside yeah and that plate adjusts to be able to adjust the coupling chain the front and rear chain so they're tied together then there's another chain that comes from the front motor <laughs> there it is <laughs> yeah yeah so that's the that's the coupling plate yep so here's a crankshaft this is the output and this this deal here will adjust to adjust that that tension and then um then this whole thing slides as well because my front axle and my rear axle are fixed i think having a wheelbase and the axles aligned so it goes down the course at 300 400 miles an hour straight is pretty critical so in order to be able to uh, to tension the final drive chain we've made it that the motors will adjust to adjust the final drive chain so that way the axles are fixed everything's square the car is square and then to adjust that chain we just move the motors okay so it's chain to so the chain it's going to be chain driven in here it's right four chains four chains and then that's what's adjust the tension on the chain yeah there's this adjustment that just the coupling chain between coupling. the front and rear motor then this adjusts to a jack shaft then the jack shaft goes to there's two chains to the final drive axle straight axle. now there have been other modifications done internally in the motors i mean are we talking different light and you know and yeah the crank's been worked it's got um, carilla rods in it um wasner pistons um transmission has been worked a little bit for reliability um it's got uh, ceramic bearings from worldwide bearings awesome so the whole motor is all ceramic bearings inside it and this um, is the throttle body assembly yeah this is, is a stock hibusa throttle body assembly um, now the intake manifold is something that we designed and built wow um it looks beautiful and i but, see you have your nitrous yeah yeah oh there. yeah yeah we're ready to spray it um we're into an issue though with okay being a streamliner part of the deals is has to be small so with the stock throttle bodies they stick up then yeah the plenum and everything makes a real tall package so what we did is design this intake manifold to lay the throttle bodies down 60 degrees so everything reduces about four inches lower when wow. i did that so again aerodynamics is a key factor of streamliners and the small frontal area is a, a, a component of proper aerodynamics. Can we see more of the technology on your on the vehicle itself? Yeah, um, um, but yeah, there's a live straight axle that goes through here. Okay. Our rear brake rotor. I see you got uh, it looks like a brake caliper down here. Yeah, and the rear this brake caliper mount was 3D printed. We used a lot of different v mediums on this car from everything from water jet to uh, to laser to stereolithography and this is a 3d rear caliper mount because we've actually that caliper mounts i think version 9 we've wow. done version 10. um you know the car is beautiful it's not something that you can just bolt buy something off the shelf and bolt it together everything is made and, oh i see a 3d printed car oh man geez we got lots and lots of components wow. that we <laughs> it's all right. I'm not sure what version of that Everybody's is. We're serving but, up for lunch today. Let's see. I mean, this this may have been version one, and then we've made maybe a version two, and then we decided, well, why don't we just 3D print the darn things before we start cutting them out of aluminum? So various different versions, and there's various different reasons why we had to do that. But as the car evolved, things changed. It's like, damn it, we got to now make another part. Yeah. So. Are you yeah. doing your 3D printing yourself, or do you have a, I mean, well, no, designing? I, 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 or? Jasper McDonald, um, dude, so freaking awesome. He does all my CAD work. I meet him every Wednesday. We meet over here and we draw up stuff, and then he either cuts it out. Um, he works at Metalcraft right down the street here, and he either water jet cuts stuff out for me and bends it up or does whatever, but he has a buddy that has a big 3D printer, so his I buddy prints that. that stuff up and you know we we're calling we call him favors on things That's and, great. and uh now the intake manifold stuff uh, 
one you just showed us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worcester Road designed and built all this, and we did a couple test fitments on it and some changes and things. And you know, it's like the the um, nitrous nozzle mounts. So it goes on there and everything's cool, but then you figure out with the intake, then all of a sudden you can't really service it, you can't really work on it. So then the nitrous mounts got moved sideways and then so it just goes through that. Many evolution. different versions of Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because once the puzzle piece starts coming together, then you figure, oh shit, it's not gonna play well with that puzzle piece. Yeah. So gonna... this car has been kind of that whole way. Well, so can can you tell me about some of the components up here on the shelf? I mean this is yeah. Definitely, when I, I notice when I walk into your shop, it's very, very attractive seeing all this stuff up here on the shelf. And well, like I said, it's just like a... all the puzzle pieces. Place to her. You know, <laughs> so you start in one area and you get this puzzle piece and you try to make, because you can't really buy stuff off the shelf. Yeah. Like all these fuel pump clamps and everything. We had to make all that. And there's actually three different versions of these fuel pump clamps. But it all bolts down over on the side. Beautiful. So again, two motors. So we have two of everything. Two fuel pumps and all this is thousand horsepower stuff. So I, when we built it, I didn't want to get more than say like an 85% duty cycle on, on components and like to keep things down to maybe 60%. Yeah. So things are- At their optimal level. Over, yeah. Overbuilt. Yeah. You know, we're running dash 10 fuel feed to the thing. Wow. You know, three quarter inch line for fuel on it. Cause again, I didn't want to run it to the point where you're at 90% of what this component is going to work yeah. and you're fuel still Fuel starvation at 400 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> More intake manifolds. Um, this is a breather box and Those are your ignition coils. Okay. Ignition coils, yep. And the breather box on top of the motor. Looks like there's a lot of. Was that? A, there's a lot of. Oh, there's the pins. Okay, I saw it. Yeah, right, it's like a heat yeah. Sink. Those are those smart. The so this is a. Uh, good coil. This is the other intake because you got two motors. So we saw the, uh, the one outside. So that's the this second is, intake. Well, this is a spare. That's a spare. Yeah, okay. this one's a spare because we got a front motor, rear motor, and spare for everything because you need a spare for everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the one out there and the motor out, outside, then another one's on a motor down. A uh, guy, Dave Consalvo, is doing working on the wiring. So there's another complete motor assembly down at Dave's that he has starting doing all the wiring and stuff so wow. i'm excited so about a whole other motor back. assembly yeah wow. yeah whole, yeah and what do we have are these intercoolers up here or what are we yeah, looking at yeah these are the intercoolers they're water cooled so water yep yeah, they're uh water to air intercoolers so <laughs> everything is all this so this would Beautiful. be the front and this dumps here then there's another turn that goes into the plenum um there's a and then um, now is this like the work that you and brian are doing he's a yeah. fabricator so this is his, his his work his welding and yeah 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 um so it's my concept my designs then jasper draws them up like uh like this mount so this mounts up on the upper brace and then as adjust to get it to the motor but jasper draws up this stuff and then brian glues it all together so yeah i like that how you have that adjustment in there you know rather than just having it one fixed point because because again these are mounted, off slightly these are mounted to the motor yeah so the motor moves front to back yeah so this hangs off an upper support rail and that has a clamps on it so when you move the motor you loosen up these clamps up so the intercooler and everything comes the whole package comes front and back yeah. to for the chain tension on it and all your different fittings and so on and yeah fuel rails we had to make all this stuff because you just can't buy it so and again we got three quarter inch line dash 10 feeds and then dash six returns because well hopefully all the fuel is going to go inside the motor yeah. um fuel <laughs> tank there's three rollovers so we got if you know you're moving those big pumps you know so two thousand horsepower pumps you know, the roller valve, so, you know, front and rear, and then this is a wow. spare just because I don't want the tank going negative on the thing, too. Now what about inside, uh, can we look in the cockpit of the vehicle and how this is going to be laid out? Well, not much to see right now, but there's a dash, obviously, and steering wheel, and so it's just, this is a carbon fiber seat out of the old car. It's still mock-up stage. Uh, the interior safety cell isn't fiberglass, but it'll be duplicated in carbon fiber. Um, and may I ask who the... Who is the seat contoured to? Is there a driver or who's My the driver? badass. Oh, so you're yeah. the driver. So you're the oh, builder yeah. driver as well. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, this is it's <laughs> my concept, my idea. Not gonna let anyone money. play with your toys. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, 
I'm the one that's gonna take it on the course, that's for sure. Absolutely, wow, that's gonna be yeah. pretty amazing. And these are some type of just uh, relay or solenoids, it looks like, or Yeah, powered? we're required to have a battery shut Disconnect off. Disconnect it, okay. Yeah, it's a battery disconnect, and these are aircraft, um, but it's uh, rated for continuous use, 500 amps continuous duty cycle. So it's not like a starter solenoid that's intermittent. Uh, these are designed for continuous use, Okay. 500 amp, they're freaking probably 500 bucks a piece for these things. Jeez, dollar an amp. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. And I see you got your Optima batteries there and that adds extra weight. And yeah, we've got one front. battery that's specifically for water pumps and fuel pumps. So two fuel pumps, three water pumps on the whole car. So that's specifically on that side. That way I keep consistent battery voltage for the ECUs, you know, the ignitions, coils, so that doesn't drop, data drop down stuff. or glitch or anything like that. Yeah, we don't get uh, voltage drops and stuff and on the fans, it. So, yeah. Because the so, pumps, they, they draw a lot. The old car, we had one front motor, one rear motor, and we'd see those spikes and stuff. So we decided to go this way here. And so we're working and on you'll some run some. You'll have an alternator on this, or is it just strictly battery charge? Total loss, yeah. Total yeah, loss. No alternators. No alternator. So then you, yeah. you swap batteries between runs or no, charge them up? No, they're actually pretty good. We charge them. Charge them. Yeah, they'll be charging okay. port. So, Pete, what's your thoughts on this? Nice car. Beautiful car. Way nicer than what we do. <laughs> um, yeah, but your stuff hauls ass. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I was telling somebody, there's two theories. You know, make it really pretty and take your time, or... Get it done and get out there. And ours is the latter. Let's get it done and get out there. Yeah, well, we're kind That's of in a hurry to get this thing done as well, too. Because uh, we got a friendly bet going with somebody that I uh, need to make it to the May event next year. So Would that friendly bet happen to be Mr. Ardema? It is. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> See, the problem with bets between friends is there's never any terms. So it usually ends pretty poorly for the loser. So... <laughs> So yeah. May, I mean, so, I mean, the season starts again in May at El Mirage, right? And yeah. then we have the events in, in summer, um, in August, right, at Bonneville. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you're, you're hopeful to be, to make some of the El Mirage events oh, yeah, this definitely. coming season? May, June, July, we need to shake this thing down. Uh, brand new car. I mean, one, SCTA is going to hold us to a speed limit first until the car gets down the course a little bit. So we, we'll have to license the car up. And then, so we'll hopefully get that done in the two-day May event, where June we can start throwing the power to the ground and see what kind of issues. But we got to shake it down at least one month to three months before we go to Bono, because we want to we want to run some pretty good numbers at Bono. Yeah. So this project's been no. Now, Kent, how long have you been um, land speed racing? How many well, years? I first went out in '84, 1984. And then uh, sporadically after that, um, Randy and I got really serious about this in 1989 with uh, the other car that we raced. And we raced that for 13 years, um, as well as various other vehicles. We had motorcycle streamliners. I, I see that, you got a motorcycle streamliner up here. Yeah, we've raced motorcycle streamliners and motorcycles. We built an electric vehicle that we raced and all kinds of stuff. Um, uh, over the years so yeah we've had a lot of fun and it's it's addicting it's addicting, it's addicting. Uh, obviously <laughs> i can i can tell yeah this thing takes up a lot of room that's for sure now do you have to build a trailer to transport it? Yeah, <laughs> we do. Because it's longer than the other car, so a trailer is in the works. Yeah, an airbag trailer. Nice. So I just, this was, uh, I have to show you this, but it's still sitting there. But this, uh, this is the rear brake caliper. Yeah. So this is all 3D printed and uh, we did all our fitment with that, so that's probably in the fourth or fifth iteration. Of yeah, it. he was showing me. And then, uh, one of the kids that's going through Palomar's course made this as his project for the year. So Senior this project. Yeah. yeah. So this is it. Uh, so this will actually be the hanger for that. That's the final version. That's after the final the pre pre okay. version. Yeah. So he just 
brought it in to show us, so that was his finished product. All right. That's great. Right. Do you know the student's name? or? Uh, that's J uh, Jasmine, Jasper McDonald. Jasper McDonald, so at yep. Palomar College, and did that in the machine tool program, I would assume. Yep, exactly. That's great. Well, so that's good to actually see the practical application. Yeah. I, you know, my, my job in education is trying to help young students understand the practical application and why you need to learn the basic skills using tools, micrometers, calipers, exactly. learn how to weld, learning how to use a DVOM or yeah. read a CAT file. And so so this wasn't something that he'll just make and throw away. This will be something that will we'll go on a 400 mile an hour car. So yeah. that'll be a, it'll be a neat piece. That's it for now, folks. Thanks for watching. We'll keep you posted on Kent Rich's 400 mile per hour streamliner as he progresses through the build process. If you haven't already, please subscribe. We appreciate the support, and I promise you I will keep interesting content coming as often as possible. Thank you again.